let us welcome the sixth speaker. The sixth speaker is Ms. Himari Siemens. Her speech title is The Wise Consumer. The Wise Consumer. So Ms. Siemens, please come up to the stage. Thank you, Master of Ceremony and distinguished judges. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. When I was 13 years old, I fell in love with a sweater and bought it immediately. But when I put it on at home, I realized that it made me look like a weight loss success story for Totoro. Just last month, I had to have the latest mechanical pencil, but after only 30 minutes of using it, my hands started to feel numb. I've had my fair share of buyer's remorse, thinking only of the good that might come from buying something or not considering the cons. To me, this sounds similar to the relationship we have with technology. Let's look at two dissimilar examples from two different times. Before 1793, processing cotton was a time-consuming task. First, it had to be harvested by hand, and then the cotton fibers had to be separated from the seeds. But in that year, the cotton gin was invented by Eli Whitney, an American inventor. The cotton gin could separate cotton fiber from seed quickly and easily. As a result, the production of cotton soared, giving rise to great fortunes in the American South. As with many technological advancements, the cotton gin's effect sent ripples across the economic landscape. The increased production of cotton led to the demand for more efficient machinery for the production of textiles, which in turn led to the invention of many machine tools. Overall, cotton production increased by more than 120,000% in the 70 years between 1790 and 1860. Plantation owners could earn greater profits and consumers benefited from the wide availability of textiles in countless ways. But there was also growth of another kind. During the 70 years between 1790 and 1860, the number of slaves in the South grew by nearly 500%. Slaves were forced to keep up with the cotton gin and the expansion of slavery eventually led to the Civil War during which 620,000 Americans died over four years in the 1860s. So, were the benefits of the cotton gin worth the countless lives lost? Or was it so essential to the Industrial Revolution that we can accept the darker consequences? Was this another case of buyer's remorse or a good investment? Our second example comes from the future. Have you ever heard of CRISPR? CRISPR is a technology capable of changing the DNA inside a living cell. Scientists have found that the system of CRISPR is programmable. All you need to do is give CRISPR a copy of new DNA, and the information contained within your DNA will change. A lot of people are showing interest in this technology, but let's be smart consumers. What are the cons? Scientists still don't understand the human genome well enough to target DNA with certainty. The system itself is not always accurate. Even if it does work, the long-term effects are still uncertain. That's especially worrying because the edited DNA will be passed on to future generations. Most frighteningly, it could be weaponized. Maybe this is one of those things we should cross off our shopping list. But let's not walk away too quickly. 
we haven't looked through the pros. We can cure genetic diseases such as cystic fibrosis. It will be possible to eliminate some forms of cancer. Until now, treating these patients was expensive and in many cases, ineffective. CRISPR, on the other hand, is low cost, requires less time, and is highly effective. So what's it going to be? Is this a purchase worth the price? Wouldn't it be a mistake to pass up the opportunity to help those who have no choice but to suffer? We have the responsibility to choose the technologies that we can benefit from and avoid regret. It is us that decides how technology affects our lives, not technology itself. The main concern isn't about how quickly we develop technology, but how we educate ourselves to use technology more wisely. So let's be more aware of and think critically about the world around us. Let's grasp at the opportunities that can teach us how to make the right decisions. Let's become wise consumers. The shelves are always full with new choices waiting for us to grab. The hidden costs may be hard to see, but that can keep us from reaching out to technologies. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Siemens. Now, we have a question and answer session. Ms. Fukushima, please. Thank you, Siemens-san. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So, um, I wanted to ask you, you say we, we have the responsibility to choose the technologies that we can benefit from and avoid regret. So who is we? Is it the government, the scientists, producers, individuals? Who is we? We is everyone you just mentioned, actually. I think that, OK, for students, we have the responsibility to pay attention in our math classes, science classes, to learn the basic knowledge that we need to participate in society where we're developing so many technologies that are actually based on those basic facts. For adults that go to work every day, I think that paying attention to the news, for example, websites on the internet or anything that you see on TV about developing technologies is very important. So, Without paying attention to that kind of stuff, all of society doesn't know where we're going with whatever technologies that are like emerging in our society now. So we means everyone. Okay. You mentioned CRISPR. Yes. How do you think we should use CRISPR wisely so that you know, we don't misuse it and reap the benefits from it? I think we should use CRISPR to um, develop many more medical treatments for genetic diseases. I mentioned cystic fibrosis in my speech, and this is the genetic disease that has currently no cure. But thanks to CRISPR, we see the potential in helping many, many people that are suffering from this disease. So I think that. Okay. We How can we not misuse this technology? I think that we need to pursue more research in this technology. In recent studies, they found that the person-to-person -person differences in DNA sequences could actually lead to mistargeting the DNA. So um, developing technology, any technology at a, at a rapid pace is very dangerous. So I think that we should treat CRISPR the same way we should treat all technologies to avoid bad effects. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Fukushima and Ms. Siemens. Please go back to your seats.